neither of those screws show any sign of moving even to the slightest extent um, I'm going to leave well enough alone there I do not need to shear those screws off and then be stuck trying to drill the remains out from the back of the knobs I'll just have another go at flushing that out getting that sticky grease out of the way and apart from that this is pretty much stripped down so I'll just clean all these bits and pieces with naphtha where I can get at them You can see this fair bit of old grease and rubbish there. Yeah, shutter release. We'll just wipe around the stem of that and see how that behaves. It's certainly behaving better. Yes, there's just Sticky old oil there really is what it amounts to. That bush there appears to be loose. Sure, what's behind that? Is it screwed in? That's the flash, the bush for the flash contact. Is it only held in with the leather that's glued to it? Yes, it is. Well, 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 that's odd. The washer here, the spacer washer, is not flat. Um, it had black paint on it at some stage. That black paint has, has come away. I don't know whether that's intended to act like a wavy washer or whether it's a spacer that's somewhat abused. It's certainly not flat, I think it's just been abused. This is just a curl of paint from it. This looks like it's been out of position. And it's been abused. That's weird. It's not even especially round, it doesn't even fit neatly around that boss. Hmm, well probably somebody knows the answer to that one, I'm glad if I do. No, that's one of life's mysteries to me, we'll find out about that later. It's almost as if that was only just glued in. There's nothing else holds that in. And that being the case, I don't know what was intended with this washer, which is very mutilated.
It served as a spacer of some sort. I don't know. Doesn't matter. I'll check the action of the shutter release. That's what I was more concerned with because the shutter release needs to move smoothly. You don't want to be have shutter releases that are stiff to release, otherwise, you know, you can you're not holding the camera as steady as you otherwise might. It needs to release with very light pressure. Okay, that looks pretty good anyway. I'm just going to clean out the hole in the middle of that shutter release because that's where the pin goes. Now the pin is what would be activated by your cable release. So the pin that sticks out of your cable release would press on the pin in here and press the release on the shutter mechanism. And of course that pin is sticky and it, it didn't fall out. I've got no special reason to believe that it would have moved smoothly with a cable release either. It's certainly moving nicely now. Yeah, that's better. See, that just fell out. That's how it should have worked. There should have been no friction there at all. No measurable friction. I'm going to clean that socket. That's where the cable release would screw in. And that's just to remove that grime because the dust that settles down in there would, um, you know, effectively make the action stiff. And these are just the trials and tribulations of dealing with old cameras. They, and stuff that's 70 years old just tends to be a bit, a bit arthritic. Yeah, that flash contact, that's weird. I'll flatten that washer out. I'm sure it serves a purpose there, but it's no good in the state it currently is. Well, I've got all that back together. And I didn't show you the process of putting it back together because it took me an age. But I'm going to tell you the principles involved anyway, so it'll get you somewhere down the track. You can see that the window here is nice and clean now. You can hardly tell there's a piece of glass there at all. That looks very easy to see through. It was just needed a very light wipe with glass cleaner basically to clean that. So, what principles are involved in putting this together? Well, you basically there's two layers here. The bottom layer, if you like, this is putting the pieces on the inside for their scales. We've got our shutter speed dial, and that needs to revolve around between B and a 500. It's coupled to this wheel you see down the bottom here. This is the bottom wheel and you see it's got a pin on it here. Well beside the pin is it comes to this stop here. I'll shift this out of the way. There's a stop here, a hard stop. As you revolve that around it hits that. That's its limit of its travel. And the limit of its travel there is at the 500th end of the scale. Or probably just slightly beyond the 500th to give yourself a little bit of slack. At the other end of the scale, let's see if we can find out where the limit is for the air okay, it's hiding under here. Let's see if we can expose it here. At the other end of the scale, we hit this hard stop. at the B end of the scale. So as this swings all the way through its movement, it goes from one hard stop to the other hard stop. That's the lower one, and obviously it needs to swing between the range of B and a 500. Easy. Then we've got that brass spacer between that and the upper layer, which is the aperture settings. And you'll notice that that brass spacer is not um, 
these cutouts here were not symmetrical. This is like a, a U-shaped thing here. It slides under there. I never did get those screws loose. There was absolutely no danger of getting those screws loose. I wanted to remove these knobs and clean everything. Absolutely no chance at all. I tried everything I knew, short of uh, so much brute strength that I'd be absolutely certain to shear the screw off. I tried heating it with a soldering iron. I don't know what's binding those screws on there. They don't come off. Regardless of that, I flushed it out as well as I could. They're good. Anyway, back to where I was. The upper set one here. Now that's the aperture settings. Let's get this out of the way. Likewise here, there's got a pin underneath it. comes up against that stop at that point. And in the other direction, it comes up against this pin here. That stop. That needs to cover the range of f22 at one end to f3.5 at the other. So when you've got everything connected correctly, you know what you're trying to achieve. And if you slacken off these rings, these retainers, you can shift your display, your apertures, display numbers by a tooth at a time relative to this piece in order to get things to display correctly. It was, I'd say it was, it was tedious. It was tedious doing it, but mostly it was tedious working out what it is I needed to achieve. Once I knew that I needed to have these dials at the bottom, the, the bits that couple to the shutter itself, move from hard stop to hard stop, which means they're moving through their full range. They couldn't possibly move through further range, a bigger range than that, and therefore they probably don't need to. Then I could see that these parts had to be correct. There was no way for them to be incorrect. And all I needed to do was make sure that the scales at the top are timed to them so that at the limits of those travels they display the appropriate numbers. So easy. Now we get down to the other bit. These filter mounts. Now these filter mounts are what basically it's the other half of this. It's the male half of the nut that's screwed on at the back. Now these things, the upper and the lower basically the same here. They've got a little stop pin in here and here and the job of that stop pin is when you put a filter in there and rotate it to bayonet it into place that you can't swing it back beyond that point basically. You can't, you can't go around the wrong way. Basically it can only go in one way and can, that just means that when you bayonet things on you bayonet it on to the right and do anti-clockwise to remove them. Easy. These things, there are three tiny little uh, cup-shaped objects and they've got three tiny little corresponding springs and they're to provide some friction, some controlled click stop I suppose you'd say for the, the filters. When you bone up the filters on there that just gives you your your friction that stops them rattling loose. It, it's just but they are three tiny little cup shaped objects made out of metal and then obviously going into holes in this piece and three tiny little springs. Same at the top, same at the bottom. They go in, in exactly the same positions relative to each other. They've got a tiny locating pin on them which locates them to this front plate. So they'll only go on in one direction, in one position, and very tedious putting this together. You could spend half a day at it and still wonder whether you've quite got it right. But basically, that was it. That's it done. The shutter release, as you can see, I've got that nice and clean. If I swing the, the latch out of the way, the shutter latched and stops you accidentally depressing the shutter. It just drops under gravity now. That's nice and loose. So that was my shutter button that was a bit sticky. It's no longer sticky. That's the front panel 
basically dealt to. That would be ready to go back onto the camera once the shutter and so forth has been fitted back. But there's no danger I'll be fitting the shutter back anytime soon because first of all I need to deal with the camera body. With the camera body there's probably multiple things I need to uh, do to this but my most pressing uh, concern here is the state of the focus mechanism. You'll notice on this side this support is quite firm. There's no side to side play. That moves smoothly with the focus knob, not a problem. This side however, it's got a rattle. Something here is not right. Now, whatever's causing that rattle is probably also causing this business where it slops backwards and forwards and, and things don't move at the same speed. So I'm going to have to investigate that. That means getting into the focus adjustment side and also taking this front piece off here I think so we can get a better look of what's happening under there. I'll see about removing those screws first and then get into the side of it. So I have got four screws. I can see they're sealed with lacquer. We'll see if they will break loose regardless. No, they will not. Okay. I'll put a drop of acetone on each of those four screws. Leave that to uh, soak in a bit. Come back, see if those screws will come out. Well, two minutes later, the uh, solvent the acetone has melted that lacquer, those screws came loose. Let's have those out. Else they're sticky with that lacquer. This should come off. Oh, my uh, film advance is dragging on it there. Will this lift off? I expect it will. There'll be a secret to this. We slide it down in one direction and then bring it back the other way, I think. Yeah, my That piece that controls my uh, controls. Oh, here we now we're, we're cooking the gas. Is this going to go? Yeah. Can't say I like the construction of these things all that much. It's a bit of a uh, a wriggle to get that on. I think they could have designed that a bit better. What does this disclose? Anything useful? Well, I've got a bit, bit more of a view of what's happening with the uh, focus adjustment. Probably not enough to do anything useful with that information, though. I'm still going to need the side off here. So, next, get the side off. I'll start at the top here. We'll lift this thing off. It looks to me like we've got two screws there holding that strap in place. That must be some sort of step screw, is it? Yes, it's got a shoulder on it. Pfft. 
probably don't need to take those knobs off immediately um, unless they're covering the, the plate. The plate may cut, cut around those things. I will need that focus knob off though. Right, I'll need a tool to engage those two pinholes. Okay, that's come loose. I only use a tool like that to get things loose. Normally I would use something softer to rotate them afterwards if, if it will. No, that's too tight still. Where's my tweezers? They'll do. This is just a cover. In here we have a, a nut. What was that? Oh, that's just fallen out of the front of the camera. That's sat in there like that. Get those two pieces to one side. That's just a light, uh, that's more of a dust trap than a light trap to go around the lens. So I want a screwdriver to suit that. And I've have a screwdriver that may fit that. Let's try this one. Oh, it's a bit short. In other words, the slot and it's not deep enough. I don't want to butcher that one. That's a uh, special one I'll use for doing the retinas. I'll try these pliers, see if they'll do the job for me. Yep, they will. That nut wasn't particularly tight, in fact it wasn't tight at all. Have that nut off. Focus knob comes off. This uh, depth of field scale there is part of the metal side of this. I need to get the leather up next. And we want all the leather off here. See if it'll lift. Unfortunately, the leather looks to be stuck down very, very well. It's sitting very flat. Unlike the leather on the front of the camera, which was anything but flat. Okay. Usually I like to start at a corner. I've got to lift some leather to get underneath it. Yeah, it sounds to me like I'm catching on the edge of the cover plate there. Yeah, it looks like exactly what was happening. So the cover plate under here comes right up to the edge of the casting. I'll peel this leather back a bit, you can see what I mean. Alright, yeah, in here. That's the cover plate that we're going to have to lift off in order to get at things. I think the leather's in quite good condition. It doesn't seem overly fragile. It doesn't seem to be delaminating to a great extent. I think I can get this off with minimal amount of damage. None with a bit of luck. Got to watch it to see how thin it is at that edge. Very likely the leather will fracture at that point. Just because it's such a, a narrow piece of leather. It's probably going to give up the ghost when I start peeling it. I'll have to work back to that point from both sides. 
I really want that to be the last piece of leather that I lift. I've got a big piece of leather flapping around with just a thin section like that holding it down it, it'll it won't go well. Now it may be that there are screws around the outside in certain places and if you knew where to get them you'd peel up the leather at those points and that would be enough but generally speaking if you want the leather to look good afterwards you're best to get all the leather off not just some of it not just peel back a little bit to get to screws but to lift the leather completely and stick it back down again completely you're much more likely to get leather that lies flat and looks neat than if you peel up a section and then try to stick that section down. Yeah, I, I could see a little crack in that piece of leather there, that narrowest part. That's not fatal, it'll can be covered up later with a bit of wax but it's undesirable As you can see, I'm sort of uh, sliding the scalpel in underneath some of the leather and then I'm twisting the blade slightly which levers up the leather so the next piece is lifted. See if I can get under this corner. Here's this is a bit awkward. That leather's pushed right up hard against the edge. When the leather is, is in a recess like this, it's effectively glued at its edge as well as glued underneath. So trying to get it peeled off right at the edge can be tricky. Particularly to start with, when you're trying to get the leather started like this. Here I'm... Okay. Yeah, here this piece of leather is probably less than a millimetre thick, wide rather. Okay, I've got it off. You see how thin that leather is there. Yeah, I've got screws there. There. 
There. There. Less certain about that one. That might come right through the surface. There's one here. There may be another one there that I'm not seeing yet. There's got to be something up here at the top. Yeah. I'm not seeing it. I would expect there to be one here, but I'm not seeing anything. Alright, I'll uh, work on that anyway. I'll change this battery.